We have a killer epidemic on the loose in the United States. It's affecting 200 million people, your friends, your family, your children, your parents, and even some of you. And guess what? You catch it from dinner, from your dinner plate. Dean Ornish's lecture was just five years ago, and already things have gotten much worse. The healthcare crisis caused by obesity and weight-related diseases is now the single greatest threat to the citizens of our planet. Cancer, diabetes, heart disease, almost all preventable by changing the way we live and how we eat. The Milken Institute says that it will cost our country $100 trillion in reduced gross domestic product in the next several decades. Yet despite the steady stream of media output related to diet and health-related diseases, nothing's changing. Where is the outrage? Why, why is this not headline news every year? What do we read about? Car accidents. 33,000 people died in car accidents in the United States last year. Guess how many from, from health and obesity-related diseases? 300,000. So the dinner plate is 10 times more dangerous than a car. <laughs> so think of this. The amount of people we could save with the simplest of intervention by applying intelligent attention to what we eat and how we live. Imagine a meal that could prevent you from getting sick, prevent wrinkles, give you more energy, more mental clarity, more physical clarity, reduces blood pressure and cholesterol levels. And all of this just by eating the way nature intended us to, without drugs, without doctors. One thing about Dr. Ornish's lecture that I don't 100% agree with is that our children will live a shorter lifespan than we will. I actually believe our children will live quite a long life. Unfortunately, they'll be supported by prescription drugs. The quality of that life may be horrible. Onset diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, tremendous depression, all caused by what we eat. In his, um, in the, in his previous uh, lecture, Dr. Ornish showed charts from the CDC and the obesity rates from 2006. These are the most recent ones we have from 2009. And here we are, um, Oklahoma, one of the states with the highest rates of obesity in the nation. And that's why I'm here, because we have to do something about this crisis now. So imagine the power of starting here in the heartland. So much of what is great about America begins here in the heartland. And we... Um, you know, we have the opportunity to spread from the inside out, to change the way the world eats from the inside out. I'm going to explain what raw food is in a moment, and I think you'll be surprised what it actually is. We might envision it as a carrot stick or a, an apple, but there's a lot more to it than that. Some people believe that we're actually eating healthier as a society because companies like McDonald's are now making salads. The, um, Dr. Ornish mentioned the McDonald's Asian salad, but unfortunately, most... Restaurant and fast food salads are wolves dressed in sheep's clothing. Salads with more sodium, fat, cooked chicken, all things that are not naturally, uh, necessarily healthy. And um, as a matter of fact, you know, case in point, Dr. Ornish talked about this being introduced in 2006. By 2008, McDonald's just discontinued the Asian salad. They were not committed to it, and their guests did not understand it. They didn't subscribe to it. So McDonald's has tried something new. In the last couple of weeks, they introduced, uh, or last couple of months, they introduced oatmeal. McDonald's describes their oatmeal as whole grain oats, crisp green apple, plump raisins, and sweet cranberries. But Mark Bittman, in an article in the New York Times, after looking a little more closely into what's in McDonald's oatmeal, described it as oats. We couldn't call it whole grain because there are 11 preservatives ingredients in the oats themselves. Oats, cream, sugar, sweet and dried fruit, and 11 weird ingredients you would never have in your home kitchen. And the McDonald's oatmeal has more calories than a Snickers bar. Um, fast food companies and upscale restaurants, it's not just about fast food, but many chefs and fine dining restaurants will use the image of a healthy salad to create uh, the allure of health, to bring, to bring diners in, to enjoy a healthy meal and, and lose weight. Most salads in restaurants, and uh, specifically in fast food businesses, are actually loaded with more calories and fat than a plate of cheese fries. And that's before the dressing is poured all over the top with synthetic oils and dyes and chemicals and preservatives and who knows what other types of ingredients. So, 
you have to take everything with a grain of salt. One thing I do, <laughs> one thing I do totally agree with that Dr. Ornish said, all of this is entirely preventable and reversible by changing what we eat. Now, I've been telling you these things, and you've all heard the phrase, never trust a skinny chef, so I'm a little, uh, a little self-conscious up here on stage in a white coat. I want to start by telling you a little bit about my background, which may have some similarities to yours, and talk about how I would unfix, how I would fix this unwellness pandemic, and finally, how it's affecting people in my world and my life, and how it can affect you and your circle. I'm 46 years old. I'm a professional chef. I uh, killed my first deer at the age of 10, and I grew up on the coast of Maine. I was uh, part of a family that believed in hunting and fishing and eating meat and potatoes, and uh, we bought whole hog into the traditional American diet. Um, we were living the farm-to-table lifestyle well before that was a buzzword for chefs across the nation, which is it's so popular these days. I attended the French Culinary Institute, where I learned to um, put endless amounts of butter and salt and sorts of other heavy cream and things like that into my food, and if not, um, the chef would certainly let you know that you were doing something wrong. And following that, I uh, started my career in the restaurant business, first as a cook and eventually opening my own restaurant at the age of 28 in New York City. And I had a very um, nice start to my career, and over the next 10 years, opened several restaurants in New York and on the East Coast. And here I was, killing people every day. Um, so, intuitively, um, I knew this, this food wasn't right for my health. I had even started to change my own dietary habits and expressed to friends my desire to one day become a vegetarian, which they dismissed and, and sort of brushed off. But I, um, nonetheless, I continued to do what I did because I was being rewarded for it. I had two nominations for Rising Star Chef in America by the James Beard Foundation, was named one of Food & Wine Magazine's Best New Chefs in America, and that culinary school, the French culinary, named me an outstanding graduate. But my life changed one day. A friend invited me to a raw food restaurant. Or actually, my friend dragged me to a raw food restaurant. It was the last place I wanted to be, but that changed the course of my life, and it really opened my eyes in terms of what, what we're meant to be eating. This food gave me a tremendous amount of energy and clarity. I walked around Manhattan for hours after this meal, and, it, and I really just immersed myself the next several days into learning more about what raw food is and what organic ingredients are all about. I really wanted to understand this food. And as I got more and more into it, it, was, it struck me like lightning. It was my aha moment. I knew exactly what I wanted to do and that my mission as a chef was to teach more people about this cuisine, how great it could taste and how great it could be for our health. I also wrote a cookbook, um, Raw Food Real World. It was one of the first um, upscale raw food cookbooks and it's becoming a leading lifestyle guidebook for people who are getting into this type of um, cuisine. And over the last several years, I've written five more raw food cookbooks and continue to write them. As I mentioned earlier, um, one of my most ambitious projects was right here in Oklahoma. And we opened a, the world's premier raw food restaurant in the most unlikely place. And trust me, I get asked every day, why did you open your first restaurant in Oklahoma? Although many chefs who, um, who don't appreciate the vegetarian diet. As you'll see on most menus these days, it's hard to find anything vegetarian for any of you vegetarians out there. They may not agree, but Forbes magazine named us one of the best, 10 best new restaurants in America this year, in 2010. So the difference is now we're healing people every day. Instead of making them tired and making them sick little by little, we're giving them life force through our food. Um, we also created the, the world's fir first state licensed culinary school. And it's a picture of our school. We've graduated students from 18 countries, over 100 students already in the last year, and we're sending these plant-focused um, students out onto the culinary battlefield every day. And it is a battlefield. <laughs> every food critic will write about the heaviest foods that they can get their hands on. So a healthy plant-based diet is so much more than a carrot stick or a red pepper. People really don't understand exactly what it can be in the beginning. These are some dishes that I've created over the years. Um, you know, as you can see, they're, they're more vibrant and colorful than a lot of cooked food dishes. And they're, they're actually just as much fun to enjoy because you eat these foods and you're, you're loaded with energy and they don't give you the tiredness that flours and sugars and so forth. That's made from a coconut, by the way. And that's made from jicama. 
Um, it takes a lot of innovation, but it's, it's, you know, we use all of our creative resources and I use all of my culinary, classical culinary training to develop this kind of food. So many people ask, well, I need meat or is this food for me and will it help me? The answer is, you bet, absolutely. I never thought that I would be one of the people who was benefiting from this kind of food and here I am. In 30 days or less, and in some cases in just a few days, for me it was four or five days, you could become healthier, you're, you're, you'll find cellular regeneration. You may lose weight effortlessly without having to diet. One thing that everybody loves to talk about, bowel movements. <laughs> one, of the, one of the first things I, I was told when I heard about raw food was it's not just what you're putting in, it's what you're taking out. And that couldn't be more true. Some of, some of us, some of you, haven't, <laughs> haven't been regular since the age of two. It's a, it's a very debilitating situation for a lot of people and not necessarily what you want to talk, discuss right before lunch, but it is a conversation we do need to have. So meats and animal products and undigested cooked and processed foods stay in our system and create bowel toxemia and the inability to assimilate minerals and vitamins and nutrients that we need to, uh, to fight disease and to stay healthy. Raw foods are very clean and natural and, and processed through our body very quickly. And I know it's hard to imagine the direct correlation. We think it's just about being uncomfortable, but that's not the case at all. There have been numerous studies done. In um, 1982, the Saturday Evening Post published an article by physicians at the um, University of California who studied 5,000 women um, the study was based on um, breast cancer and constipation. Women who uh, were constipated, de defined as two or less bowel movements per week, were four times more likely to develop breast cancer than those who were regular at least once a day. In another study in the um, scientific journal of the American Academy of Neurology, a study of men showed that men who were regular, were, or men who were not regular, were four and a half more times likely to develop Parkinson's disease. And I can tell you how I feel um, if, uh, if I'm not, if my system is not moving properly, I feel like crap, no pun intended. <laughs> so now that we're comfortable with each other, well, let's talk about sex. <laughs> um, who, who, what woman wants to have sex when she's constipated and, and bloated from a huge meal? Um, <laughs> What man, after a 40-ounce steak and a uh, you know, big plate of, of uh, mashed potatoes, really you know, is, think, is in the mood and has energy and stamina? He'd rather be on the couch, admit it. <laughs> so food and processed food is, um, is actually, most of our daily diet is a drug and it's, it's, it's caused an addiction. And we, um, it's rewired our brain and to thinking that that's what we want and that's what we need. And at the same time, it's destroying our health and our energy levels and our sex drive and all these other things and our digestion. And there is a, um, you know, there's a very simple solution, raw food. And, and it's, if it's raw, eat it. If it's not, don't. <laughs> but with raw food, you won't be addicted and you won't have these symptoms. You, um, you, you won't ever hear, um, I'm sorry, honey, tonight I have, I have a headache. So raw food equals more energy, equals more stamina, equals more sensuality, more sexuality, more energy. So you must be wondering now, how do you make these wonderful dishes? Um, <laughs> you are what you eat, by the way. <laughs> and as my brother told me I was nuts and he told me I was bananas, I thanked him. <laughs> so you... You are probably wondering how we make these dishes because they're quite elaborate and, and beautiful looking and colorful and they look very complicated. There's, there is a lot going on. There's a lot of creativity going on and we're basically, the creativity is by losing all these, these things that I learned at French Culinary Institute and over the years. We're not, we're using only natural ingredients, unprocessed, raw, organic whenever possible, fruits, vegetables, nuts and seeds. We don't heat anything above 105 degrees. That's when enzymes start to become destroyed and we need these enzymes for proper digestion. And you all heard what doesn't happen if we don't properly di digest. So it's, um, it's a natural way of cooking and a natural way of eating. And 
a lot of people come to me, and this happens every day, and people will, will say to me, do I have to eat 100% raw? Will I get any benefit if I incorporate it into my life? Well, the ideal answer is yes. You, the more you eat raw, the better you'll feel. I recommend 100% raw. But if I were to tell you, if you just incorporate 5% of your diet, 5% uh, of your diet is raw food, you'd live to a ripe old age and die peacefully in your sleep, you'd probably say, no problem, I'll do it. I'll eat an apple every morning. But if I told you you had to do that 100% of the time, you may not, uh, you may not, you may hesitate. But just to give you an idea of how easy it is, we eat three main meals a day typically. One meal a day, you're already at 33%. You'll notice a huge difference right away. So here's why it's important, because if, if you eat this way and you feel good, you're going to be happier, and the people around you are going to want to eat that way, and they'll be happier and healthier as well. It's said that the average person's circle um, is, uh, the average person has 20 close friends, and the average person will have 200 people at their funeral, unless they lose their friends by dragging them to a raw food restaurant, that is. <laughs> but this room is a good representation of the average person's circle. So some of you were given a, a ping pong ball uh, at the beginning of this lecture, and if you could just please stand up, that would be great. Anybody has a ping pong ball? So... <laughs> so those... <laughs> <laughs> those, those seated, you're very, you're very lucky. Um, you're one of the ones who hasn't been affected. But if you look around, this is the percentage of people in your circle that will be affected by health and diet-related diseases. So everybody is affected by this. We're all touched by this. And if you, um, if you want to imagine how raw food and eating healthy can make a difference, let's, um, let's imagine a 50% of the people who have these health-prone diseases, these diet-prone diseases, decided to take up a plant-based diet. So anybody born between the months of January and June, please sit down. So that's a, that's a big difference. Now, if you were born between July and December, we have 100% of the people eating raw, please sit down. So you all may sit down. So <laughs> <laughs> we are all touched. It's unavoidable. Um, in, this, in this crisis. We did, we did some of our own research, our, our own version of a raw food Gallup poll recently, and the results were really quite telling. 70% um, of the people we studied didn't understand what their body mass index was, a ratio of their body fat percentage according to their, their health and their weight, and a general indication of overall health. Most people didn't even know that. Almost 0% said that they ate raw food, even though many of them actually do eat raw food, salads and apples and bananas. But what that says is they don't really know what plant-based, healthy, you know, enzyme-rich foods are. And 65% uh, of those people didn't even realize the benefits of a raw plant-based diet. So the important thing is the information. If we don't get the information out there, people don't know how to make the right choices. And we, um, we have been conditioned by advertisement and by restaurants and by fast food companies and, and schools and hospitals that we need these processed foods and we've been conditioned in the, in the improper way because look at the, the results. So there's, here's a picture of me, um, which you can see me here, but I wanted to show you also a friend who contacted me recently. Uh, from, I haven't seen him from high school for 25 years. He's the same age as me, and we graduated together. Um, and um, he is having some health problems. He's like one of many millions of Americans, likely on a number of prescription drugs, cholesterol medication, heart medication, mood drugs. Um, and, and one of many people, one of millions of people who are literally throwing away their, their health of their bodies and their lives and their ability to spend time, quality time, with their family and friends and loved ones because of what they eat by not changing their diet. 50% of the people in our study were on prescri prescription medication, 50%. As, as Dr. Ornish said about the world's killer diet, the most frustrating thing about this is that it's almost entirely preventable and reversible by changing the way we eat. So together, by communicating, by taking action, we have to fuel the outrage. We have, to, we have to help people understand the benefits of this and get the word out there. 
If we don't, by explaining, if it's raw, eat it, otherwise don't. If we don't do that, this, this will constitute the greatest natural and preventable disaster of all time. Greater than all tsunamis, atomic bomb explosions, wars, earthquakes combined. My mission as a chef is, and my passion as a chef is to help the world learn about this cuisine, to teach people how to eat better one bite at a time. So today, when you have a choice, instead of that bag of potato chips, grab a banana or a handful of blueberries. Actually, they had some in the hallway here today and they were great. And help me spread the word. If nothing else, eat a little bit more raw food. It will change the way you feel. It will improve your health. And if you feel the outrage and the frustration, spread the word. And together, we can change the world. Thank you.